Hello and welcome to the TMC Newsroom. My name is Rich Franny. Thanks for watching. We are at Interop uh, 2011 in Las Vegas on our program. It's Mark Stratton. He's the SVP of Global Solutions Marketing at Siemens. And uh, Mark, welcome. Thank you, Rich. Glad to be here. We're thrilled to have you. And uh, one of the trends at this event has been, without a doubt, just the move to the cloud. And I was hoping yeah. we could talk about how, uh, in the communications market, the cloud is, uh, is playing. How, how are companies uh, going to the cloud in telecom? Yeah, well, of course, as you know, there's a lot of hype around the cloud uh, at the moment. And I think there's always a question as to how big it could be in the enterprise. But uh, what we're really seeing is uh, really mass, I would say massive uptake uh, over the last uh, 18 months, but for a private cloud. And uh, so we've now, uh, we've got about uh, almost 1,200 uh, private cloud uh, installations worldwide in all continents of the world, all sizes, all industries, some of the biggest names uh, out there uh, that, that you can imagine. And uh, the, the value proposition really, uh, really plays uh, strongly. So we're seeing a big uptake. I think the next step will be uh, for the small, medium, and the public cloud. We just turned up our first public cloud customer last week, as a matter of fact, in Germany. Um, and Who's that? Uh, you know, I don't know who it is off the top okay. of my head, but it's a small, it's a small company. It's an okay. SMB. So that's good, right? So small yeah. companies, large companies, any exactly. large company yep. can go to the cloud. Yeah, but we think the large companies will start probably more in a private cloud, you know, running out of their data centers, leveraging that. Uh, and then over time, we have some scenarios where there's franchisees, and so they use the private cloud for their own uh, enterprise deployments, and then they use the public cloud deployments for the franchisees, because the franchisees, of course, uh, you know, need to be billed, et cetera, et cetera. So really interesting, this hybrid model, I think, is really going to evolve a lot. And so that's a great situation where um, and there are a lot of companies like that that have those franchises, but the phone, yep. you need to have seamless connectivity of the telephone network, right? Yep. Yep. So that's a perfect example of when this hybrid cloud would come into play. Yeah, we see, um, I'll give you a couple examples. We see it really taking off on companies with multiple sites. So Commerce Bank in uh, Germany, uh, they started with 1,200 branches, right? And now they're, they're actually backing into their medium and large offices uh, to run a, a, a private cloud. Um, now we have other scenarios, Arcos Dorados, which is McDonald's in Latin America. And so they have a data center in Latin America, uh, uh, in Buenos Aires, and they'll have 1,000 locations from uh, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, all the way up into Mexico that will run off this private cloud. And so that's a combination of offices and restaurants. And so what's really interesting about that is in the old world, you would never think of putting a restaurant off a central system. It'd be a key system. It'd probably be there'd probably be 100 different types of key systems, uh, all kinds of connectivity issues. And so they just, they just massively eliminate complexity, enhance communications, and they can scale like crazy. That's another interesting example. So Arcos Dorados, uh, they own a lot of the restaurants, but there's an equal number of restaurants that are uh, franchises. So you could imagine that maybe a, a private cloud, public cloud in that type of environment would be uh, interesting as well. Uh, we have a number of medium-sized uh, companies here in the United States uh, as well. Um, a town of Enfield in Connecticut, uh, very interesting deployment. Uh, Clark Atlanta University in uh, Atlanta is another interesting medium-sized deployment. So uh, customers of all sizes are seeing benefits, and we have many of the Fortune uh, 500 uh, as well are into uh, deployments of these scenarios now. So uh, it's been an exciting time the last few years it for has. your company. Yes, it has. And we've come out of, you know, we've come out of being for sale by Siemens, and now we're part owned by the Gores Group of Los Angeles and Siemens. Uh, we've had a, a great new CEO, Hamid Akavan, from uh, T-Mobile in Germany, and he's brought a lot of stability to the company. Uh, we are absolutely financially strong. We're, we're growing. Uh, we're, we have a big cash balance. Uh, we're looking for ways to enhance our building. We have a good strategic plan to move forward, and we're focused on the future, and I'm, I think we're going to do well for ourselves. So one of the uh, more interesting areas right now in the communication space uh, certainly from a growth perspective, is the session border controller yep, market. Definitely. And your company has recently come out with a product in that space. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, at this show uh, we announced the OpenScape session border controller. It's a uh, software-based session border controller optimized to work with the Siemens OpenScape UC uh, server product. 
and it offers a lot of benefits for customers. The first benefit is it's about half the price of a regular uh, hard, you know, regular session border controller. It's integrated into the, the management system and it has really good scalability. It'll scale up to about 4,000 uh, sessions and that translates roughly, you figure four to five to about, so anywhere, let's say anywhere from, depending on your traffic load, uh, 12 to 20,000 users, which is about 98% of the market. Because not everyone's on the phone at the same time. Yeah, not everyone's on the phone. It's like trunking. But it, uh, it gives customers a lot of benefits. The first thing is, is really massive reductions in network savings. And in these private cloud examples I was talking about, uh, including uh, uh, ourselves with uh, what we call our Star UC self uses product, we have a really detailed white paper on it. But the network savings by switching to SIP is just massive and the session border controllers provide the security and some of the management tools that you need to do that and it allows you to centralize your trunking. So you don't have to have trunking in all these other locations. So it's really an elegant uh, solution that reduces complexity, massively eliminates cost. So it handles your trunking, it also supports, supports teleworkers securely, remote branches uh, securely. And uh, one of the unique capabilities of ours is it can be separated uh, over layer two network or geographically separated over layer three, which is important because most of our cloud solutions are physically, they have nodes in two different locations. So if there's a failure in one data center, uh, the other data center picks it up. And so we can do that with the session border controller as well. And it's probably worth pointing out that your company does partner with uh Acme Packet, who's the major player in the session border yeah, this, space. Yeah, yeah, we do, absolutely, and we, continue, we plan to continue to partner with them. Uh, the session border controller that we announced is a Siemens um, a designed and uh, a product, and made product, but we'll continue to work with Acme Packet in a number of different scenarios. For, for large installations, uh, there are some uh, situations in multi-vendor environments, and, and many customers are multi-vendor, or there are some situations where customers have standardized on Acme Packet and we'll work with Acme Packet. And we do a lot of work with them now. We use them in, in many of our, our solutions and, and they're a good partner for us and we're uh, uh, plan to continue to work with them. Awesome, thanks for being on the show, Mark. My this pleasure.